talk about hair. It's not your average conversation. It's not your average conversation. About hair. Whoa, so happy Monday, everybody. The main talk crew is back in the building on Monday. Hey, I answer. Hey, Kai. Hey, Shani. How okay, are you? So you? You know, sporting those pretty earrings and still sporting your braids. But guess what? You didn't even know there's nothing different about me. What's different? I was, I was about to say to you, you were talking. You got an afro. No, that's not it. What did I do? You cut your hair. You no. colored it. <laughs> you let that gray go. <laughs> you know, I let the gray go. No, no, no. Listen, oh, listen. Okay, no, no, no. I let, listen, no, I let I it go. Loving your gray. Woo! Just like another love, TKO. You know, I was feeling. You came on back with the people in the thirty-five year olds. I could, I, I could, I tried, I tried. March, April, May, June, July, August, September. You know, almost that seven months. I just, I just wasn't feeling. You know, yeah, I feel you. Sex. I was feeling old. You know, I started. I was no matter what anybody said. I just wasn't feeling it. Although everybody yeah. was like, "It look cute. Let's stay. Yeah, do it." But a lady at the salon, a seasoned uh, customer at the salon, told me I got time to be gray. So mm -hmm. she said, "So go ahead and put color in it." I said, "That's I'm right." So glad she told you that. I got I'm, so, I, I, I'm so glad she told you this. Yeah, you're right. You like, okay, so so I noticed the fro, but you're right. That should have been the first thing I noticed the way I'm the main one going on. Like, okay, you in that gray. I'm gonna cover my ass up. Like I, I've been in these braids with a, a week and I already my hair going out the gray. But I'm gonna I'm get something, I'm gonna get something to cover it up. But I want to shout out like two uh, two people, two people. First, I'm gonna shout out to uh cousin Joe in Charleston. She gave me these earrings, she got from South Africa and she listens to the show. So I told her I was gonna wear them for the show today. And I also wanna shout out a person who listens to us every week and he don't play about listening to us, Uncle Derek Foster hey, Uncle Derek. from The Shy. He is watching right now. Hey, Derek, thank you for listening. <laughs> Listen, he is one of my favorite person. <laughs> Listen, Derek is like, I, you know, what time are y'all going on? I got to yeah. see what's going on. So, you know, we have Miss Aretha who listens every week as well. So let's shout out to Miss Hi, Aretha. Mr. Aretha, who has a birthday. Happy birthday, early birthday. Yes, happy early birthday. And and thanks to anybody who, who's been watching, who's been following us. You know, the biggest thing mm -hmm. is make sure you guys mm -hmm. follow us on our main talk page. You know, we launch live on our personal pages, mm -hmm. but we want you guys to follow us at main talk on air on Facebook. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to take this time to share. Hey, Tanya Scott, how you doing? Our store world who's looking, um, but make sure you guys follow us on uh, Main Talk. That's our page. Make sure you follow us there and Main. I was Main Talk on air, right? Mm -hmm. And Main, main talk, talk on air as well as on Instagram. So make sure y'all follow us. We trying to talk about something good. We not on here long, but uh, how was your vacation before we start? It was really really nice. Um, I think Nia had a wonderful time, but I'm a little like Madea. Like about on Wednesday going into Thursday, I was like, everybody needs to start getting their clothes ready because we leaving early Friday morning. We done did everything. We done been everywhere. It's time to go home. I was ready to get back in my own bed, be in my own house and just acting like an older lady ready right. to go home. I just thought it was funny because my grandmother used to do the same thing. She'd come into Atlanta to see us Friday and she'd see everybody. It's just me and me and mama here. And then on by Saturday, it's like, well, we can get on back down that road now. It's like, well, what are you just got here? So I'm starting to act just like a like it's time to get on back home. So yeah. But how did you feel? Okay, because we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. And you guys went out. How did you feel with the hotel? What was the vibe? What was the feel yeah. of everything being out of town? Because yeah. Well, we went to a resort and um I was a bit disappointed because when you said a hotel, you really want your room like serviced every night. And so because of COVID, it had all these um amenities that was not available and you can really get your room clean every night and you had to go get your own towels and and so I think if I had known some of those things before I gone I probably wouldn't have chosen that hotel um because again I could have said an Airbnb if I want to do everything myself but I like being waited on because you know my ancestors were kings and queens of Africa <laughs> 
Well, you know, a lot of hotels are doing the same thing. I thought the same thing when we went, um, I guess, to uh, my husband's hometown and we stayed at the hotel that we normally stay at. And I was like, well, y'all not cleaning the bathtub? Will we only clean the hotel on Wednesdays and Fridays? Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> like, well, then I don't know. We should have not came because that's what yeah. Are y'all lowering y'all rate? Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. All the things that you think that you want to receive you we take for granted that when you go to a hotel you look to be serviced you look for them to clean your room all these things that are extra and then when you come come back to your room you like the bed i made yeah you know so yeah. things like that well good well, i'm glad y'all got it back safe y'all yeah. got back safely and yeah. tonight you know we wanted to there's so many things that happen we talk every week and there's so many things that have happened that today we wanted to combine two things just because news is happening so fast and for those who are watching, Main Talk is a talk show where we talk about hair, but it's not what you what you say. It's not your not what your average conversation about hair. And you, and you know what? You know what? As we talk about that, because I was talking about that with someone um, last week, and and we were talking about it's not your average conversation. And I was saying you just don't know how many conversations it is in the world about your appearance, right? and your hair you like we we don't we don't scramble to find conversations to talk about it is always something to every week we got a conversation a one or two that we got to choose from to have this conversation about hair or appearance or something to do with that of how we look or how you know being black and all. it is it, it is a it is a very vast or, or very vague conversation you, it, believe it or not you think that it's like not a lot but it but it is it is every week every week so today let's talk about ruth bader ginsburg the, the notorious the notorious rbg R right yeah you know uh she passed away what last week last week and, uh -huh. last week and so rest in peace to her but you know one of the things that we wanted to talk about is that she was so groundbreaking as being only the second woman on the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And one of the things as I was reading about her and all of the different things that she did for women and women causes is that, you know, I couldn't help but because I'm main talk, mm -hmm. but pay attention to that. She wore her hair back all the time, all mm -hmm. the time. And when you look through some pictures for those of us who are going to Google and look at her, Sometimes when she was with her husband, you know, she had her hair down in her early, earlier years. But when she got on the Supreme Court, she kept her hair pulled back. Mm -hmm. So I really couldn't find anything that really just said why she did it. You know, I just wanted to discuss it because in this world that we live in now in, with women's rights and equal rights and all of that, I could just imagine back with her being only the second woman on the court. One of the things I read was that the reason why she and the other female that was on the court, the reason why they wore those like little lacy type things mm -hmm. is that the robes were designed for men mm -hmm. and they left an opening for the tie to show a man's tie, a man's tie, mm -hmm. but they didn't do anything for, for women. So here she was on the court. And so they started to start sprucing up, you know, with the little lace things, mm -hmm. but as it relates the to collar, the hair, collar. Uh -huh. Yeah, the collar, the little lace collars. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so as it relates to her hair, I was just thinking that did she wear her hair back to not focus so much on the feminine side mm -hmm. of herself, mm -hmm. to look more like them because men wear their hair short and to not have these men back in that day to really use her hair to show as a symbolism of weakness. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you wear it down, you know, a man, see, you know, you, like you got your hair down, you pull it off to the side, you pull it around the front, it's kind of like, oh, okay, you're trying to be sexy. Mm -hmm, you know, yeah. did she not even yeah. want to even show sexiness? Yeah, no, no, she she and she actually addressed that in several documentaries and in, in the movie that they did uh, about her. Um, she talked about that she wanted to be respected for the knowledge that she had. And so she pulled her hair back because as you know, um, men, especially during that time, it was probably more pre prevalent that that time than now that men were very sexist and they, and they look at us, our, how we wear our hair. And so she pulled her hair back because she didn't want that to be a deterrent of what she was delivering to them and the knowledge that she had. So she absolutely pulled her hair back so people can respect her in that way. And, and, and I'm, and I'm going to tell you as you know, when I was like at the, in the peak of HR, the VP of, of human resources, if I would have to speak to a mostly male 
um, clientele, if you will, or employees. I always like wore a suit, you know, I, I wouldn't wear a skirt. I wore pants, a pantsuit and I would scale my hair back because I, I didn't want them to be like, Ooh, seeing a whole bunch of, bunch of sexist things about me, but I wanted them to hear the information that I was giving them because I needed them to learn and not go out somewhere and hurt themselves because they didn't hear the training that they needed to get. <laughs> so that's, that's important to do. And because men do, we know a lot of them do get caught up in, you know, how people look and where they look. And, you know, even, even with me being Muslim at the mosque, you know, and most mosques, the men sit on one side, Mm. And the ladies sit on one side mm -hmm. and it's supposed to be so that you can focus on the speaker who's speaking and not so much of how this person is looking, how this person is looking. Because I know a lot of people, some very, very, very personal that say they go to church just to meet. That's, that's right. right? That's right. A that's person. Right. Like, that's right. They want to meet. They want to meet somebody, or they'll say, you know, the ones in the church. They the ones really kind of putting it. You know. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I literally told you know I have a lot of male brothers, and but I mean, someone very very close to me has told me when they want to meet someone to go out on a date and have a particular type of date, they go to the church. And so, so I'm saying that to say that um, that men are looking for. They are. I mean, men are men, girls are girls and boys are boys. Really, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. the real story. But in the, in, the, in the sooner we accept that, the better we'll be. Not saying that we should, we should uh, not be the smart girls that we are, but we can be smart and pretty too, right? I'm right. trying to deliver that to my now 16 year old that you, we can be pretty girls, right? And we can also be smart girls, right? We don't have to look like a guy and and not be and and dumb down ourselves. We can still be smart because mo most oftentimes we're smarter than them, than them, not because of the knowledge, but because we have this additional sixth sense that makes us be able to see things that they can't see. You know, right? So we do sometimes have to just like calm our look down if you will because we want to get the mess i know that that's true for me like right that is so true for me i i don't want you i want you to hear what i'm saying you go out there on that that if it's a plant that plant form you you get hurt and cut because you're not paying attention to what i'm saying you're looking at is my, my hair because the hair is uh a symbolism of feminism and you may want to get flirty versus uh you know get dirty with the words that I'm you know, you know that I'm delivering but it's it's so funny that now how, how times have changed and as we're having this conversation some things have just came up in my mind just thinking about where she was back then with only being the second woman on the supreme court to now in the natural hair movement we have these girls like shaving their heads off and some some men don't really kind of like that. They kind of feel like it's kind of like like uh, not feminine, feminine like. So you know, it's amazing how times have changed because we're doing what we call the big chop. Mm -hmm. And if you talk to most husbands, I would love to hear from the men who are listening. Like, what do you feel about your woman with her hair, you know, cut off real low, or even wearing it something like how I'm wearing my hair now? I remember when the natural hair movement first came out. Uh, my husband made a statement that he didn't, he didn't like, you know, uh, and don't judge me y'all because well, I'm, I'm telling his business that he didn't really like the whole nappy hair. They're going to judge you just, no, no, they're going to judge you. Right. So, but whatever, like, right, you know but, what whatever, I mean? like right, but whatever, but he yeah. said he didn't like that nappy hair look. And mm -hmm. so I would have clients that would come into the salon that said, you know, I like that look with that fro, you know, but my husband is not kind of feeling that. And so the question becomes like, you know, are we still doing the same, you know, was Ruth really telling the truth? Was Ruth telling the truth? She was telling the truth. She was about, telling. you know, pulling it back mm -hmm. to real, at a time when she pulled it back, right? Because again, we saw her at moments with her husband when she pulled it down because now there was a time- To be softer and- To be softer. And to be girly. To be and girly. And sexy and all and, those things. Mm -hmm. Exactly, because if you look at girls in the, now we have the WNBA, so if you look at the girls in the WNBA, nobody's running up and down the court with their hair down, right? So, well, all right, right, right. So of course with that, you know, they have yeah. their hair pulled back. But again, that's more of a masculine kind of like sport, right? No, 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 no,
that women yeah. was allowed to participate and then we started know, doing it's like just like just like women in, in football you know so now yeah. you got women playing football or I, women I go with boxing. The football i go with the football but when when it comes to um sports because i play tennis and and for me and and my husband you know i'm out there i got my hair pulled back or i got a wrap i got sweat coming down my face and but i can't go out there looking like a girl because like i remember when i was doing a photo shoot right and we did some photo shoots on, on, the, on the tennis court, right? Now I got on, I don't have on heavy makeup, but I got on a little light makeup and we're trying to pose and I'm trying to hit the ball, but I can't hit the ball because my sweat is coming down my face because I, I, I got makeup on and I'm out here playing tennis and it don't go together. Like, you know, I'm like, this is real hard to do because right. I really want to hit this ball, but I can't sweat. And then I got my hair, you know, a little put back a little bit and it can't sweat because then it's gonna you know it's gonna curl up and so i had all these things i needed to think about and what i was thinking about is that this does not go with playing tennis i like the sweat because i don't have time if i'm out there trying to execute these plays you know and be, be worried about be, your, be, hair. Him, your hair him or worry about my hair and or makeup right right i, right. I ain't really trying to be a girl like that. i'm trying to be a good tennis player exactly you, you know, know you know uh you know as and one one of Look, our I am, uh, I am viewers, <laughs> one of our viewers made a statement said back in the day women were encouraged to keep their hairstyles simple as to not distract from their professionalism mm -mm, mm -mm. which is true because we also know especially with the president that we have in office now mm -hmm. that you know you come in with a skirt with your hair down well I, and i'm gonna be qu quite honest you know i in the business world i have been in I have uh, the beauty industry back in the day. I've been in it for 22 years now. So it's kind of changed now, which is different from 22 years ago when I first got started. I was told to go into certain meetings where I'm talking about trying to expand into major stores that, you know, you get ready to talk to all men, you know, put on a tight skirt and look the part because these dudes they like looking at cute women. I will say it was lying, but we had that whole conversation about that when you were told that, and you were told that by a freaking male, right? No, I was told like, that by a female. Oh, 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 oh. But you were told that by a male too, because I remember. So you told I was, I was told by a male, but I was first told by a female that when you mm -hmm. go put on a tight skirt because it can sway their thought process. So going back to Ruth, why she kept her hair back, like you said, that she said is because she didn't want, she wanted them to hear what she had to put on the table. She and she was dealing with facts. She was she dealing was with facts and cases that had already been in, in you know what I mean? It, 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 was, it, was, it, was, it, was a, it was a situation where she was dealing with facts and cases that had already gone before her. And she's, of course, you know, law, you re reiterated the cases to prove your point and what you're doing. So for her, it was just given the facts and she didn't want them to be deterred from the facts by looking at, oh my gosh, she's such, she's such and she's she was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And especially since she was dealing with a lot of, you know, women's issues, abortions, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, women uh, who had to decide whether they're going to keep a baby because they got pregnant via rape, mm -hmm. you know, all these different things like that. She didn't want them to even feel like she was speaking on behalf of a woman per se, mm -hmm. but as facts, even though she was a woman, she needed them to see past the yeah. long pretty a uh, beautiful woman that her husband saw she needed them to, to pay attention to the facts of the case that she was putting out yeah absolutely okay no, okay no, what no, I, no i told I, I totally i totally agree i totally agree okay but okay, she did so a lot for women and um you know she is definitely going to be missed yeah. and um i was just but, but 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 the thing is what i was just saying when she passed just when um um when what's his name passed uh here in atlanta john john um yeah representative john lewis when mm -hmm. he passed my first thought was was that now rb she been having cancer a long time and she'd been living for a long time right and i was thinking when we talk about main talk not your average conversation about hair i was thinking that how is she living so long right mm -hmm. with cancer and the cancer wasn't far from what representative john lewis had and I was just as a public health, you know, my public health mind was, how is she still living? You know what I mean? And and so, it, you know, it, you know, it just can't, you know, it really goes back to 
Well, life. you know, it could be spiritual because she was really trying to hold on because as we are having this conversation uh -huh. about women, all women are not created equal. If we're looking at who they trying to put on, you know, who they now trying to replace her with. So that's a whole nother story. But it's, yeah. again, it's not your average conversations about hair. And we'll yeah. take this PSA to say anybody who's watching, you need to tell everybody, their mama, their cousin, their sister, and their brother that everybody need to get out and vote because we're getting ready to come up on early voting. And we really, really, based on the information we found out today about paying $750 in taxes, when you, Lord have mercy, $750, the president- Yeah, but you know what, I'm, I'm gonna go, I don't wanna go back to the, what you said about get out and vote because it's, it's so important. And not just the big election, but the local elections. And when we talk about, you know, our, our black men and in, in, in the Breonna Taylor thing, you know, we're talking about the DA, we're talking about, um, of the attorney general, all these things of the local elections are just as important as the, the big election. So, mm -hmm. but it but it's all around that same time. So it's important to go out. And, and one particular thing I'm gonna say is that people, what I hear people say often is they're not gonna do anything, they're not gonna change, and it's just America. And I right. agree with them on all those things, but this is what I'm gonna say. If you're gonna live in America, Get out, get out of vote. vote. If that's not, right. then let's all get on the ship uh, and boat, head on back over and, right. and go. But while we're here, while we're here, I mean, just just vote. We have to. We it's have real, to real, 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 real simple. You got to pay your taxes because that's what they said. Even though your boy ain't paying none, you got to pay them, right? So you may as well vote. You got to pay taxes in your house. You got to. You got to do a lot. You got to pay taxes on everything. If you're going to do all those things and assimilate in America. And when I say assimilate, I don't mean being whitewashed. I mean that we have to do what they're saying. We have to do while we live in this country, right? If we're right. going to do all those things, then we may as well vote. It's real easy. It's real. Cause try, Cause try not to pay, try not to pay your taxes and see what the IRS is going is right. to do. Listen. You know, Ver Veronica said, yes, vote. We need to go after the changes to our laws and it's very important you know hey, veronica chris, hey veronica you know chris chris cuomo had a um you know especially for men and, and it's, it's men that watch us too mm -hmm. and he had a man that was on his show before we move into our uh last uh, last seven minutes you know uh, of the show uh a man on there talking about, well, you know, I don't, I'm not voting for Trump, but I don't know if I'm gonna vote for, for Biden. So I'm just gonna fill in something in the independent. Now, you know, so I, I want to say something to that because when we had the, the election uh, of voting between uh, Trump and Hillary, I had some, as you said, the red, the black, the green mm -hmm. power friends who said like, you know, I'm not voting. I, I filled in my son's name in the spot just to do it. So we can be that red, the black, the green that you're going to feel in your son's name or feel in your cousin's name. But that is not, that's the same thing as voting for the we other want person. To red, the black, the green, the yellow. We just want to say we want to be that woke. If you want to be that <laughs> that you sleep. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying we have so many. Bring in Mark of God because you know that's my boy. So we just go say, but you're, but you're, but you're right. But you're right, Deshaun. Because you know, we have to stop it. If you're going to be woke, wake up. That's all. That's right. Wake up, you, you're gonna have to choose somebody. So at the end of the day, you can you can fill in your uh, cousin's name, you can fill in the independent name, but just know for a fact. That means that you're not voting for the person that you didn't know to vote for. And yeah. You might as well stay at home. That's the sad part. I mean, you trying to say you're going out, you need to vote on somebody that you like. And if you don't like either one of them, you're gonna have to vote on somebody. And the and, deadline is coming up. Um, I, I want to say it's October the 3rd, but it may be another day to register to vote. Like if you don't register to vote by that date, then you can't vote. So register to vote, people. Right. And don't vote for Kanye West. Like I'm gonna write Kanye West name in. So that's but that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother thing. But speaking of Kanye West and speaking of hip hop, as we wind down, so you know, RIP to R B G. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you know, for holding down the fort for all these years, pulling your hair back, doing it in a style that's fashionable. But one thing I want to say about that, one of the things that I read about her that when she wore her hair back, that she brought back the scrunchies. And mm. so when I was when I was reading about her, when she wore her hair back, she always wore different scrunchies. And she she was so because she was RBG, she purchased scrunchies from different countries and things like that. So now this 80s scrunchies, 
and they were showing different pictures that she kind of brought it back and she even bought these ex expensive scrunchies to wear her hair back. So RIP to RBG. And but, then, but I want to say, I'm sorry to show that uh, October the 5th is the, is the deadline. Okay, that's for voting. Yeah, Ta Tasha, Tasha, hey T. Barry, she said, yes, vote and early vote. Just vote, Yeah. you know, early vote, vote on the day of, mail Send it in. vote. Yeah, just yeah. just vote. Anybody listen, go get your mama, your cousin, your auntie. And make sure they're registered. We have to October the 5th to get these people registered. Who's I, mean, not, I, 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 I mean, still know some people who are not registered. And that's sad to say, but register to vote or don't call my number. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right, you're stupid. You well, we, Lose listen, my we, number if you're not registered. You know, listen, we're going, I, I'm not even trusting it with, even with my daughter who's away <laughs> in college. We're going to go get her. Uh, so that she can come home and early vote on that Saturday, that only Saturday that they have here for her to vote. So we're just going to go drive and get her because that's important because every vote counts. But now we're on the final countdown. Kai, we are on the final countdown of the show. Yeah, woo, 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 woo. we're on the final countdown. So I want to, I want to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, the things just keep going. Yeah, we're on the final countdown. <laughs> One of the producers. The one of the producers. Okay, trying to do it all. Okay. But one of the things we want to talk about and we want to end with is wow, how about, you know, Black Lives Do Matter, but how about Black Change Matter? And so how about Deion Sanders yes. accepting, you know, the position as head coach at Jackson State University? How yeah. big is that? Yes, how big how 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 big is that? I mean, that is that is so big. That is gonna do so much. I said, Nia, you sure you're going to Tuskegee? You sure I'm gonna go to Jackson State? No, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> but that is but that is so big. M me and Chuck had had such this huge conversation about what this means for HBCUs and 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 football and the division that they're in. And and and, and he's also bringing along Terrell Owens and um Oh, one other person. Oh, uh, Tara Owens is, is going to yes, be. Yes, 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 yes. Tara. And, and I think, uh, oh, God. Oh, wow. That's big. Yeah, he's, he's bringing along two other football players with him to um, one offense, one defense um, to also help him and, and see. And then what's going to happen is, is that they're going to get these guys that would normally go to, you know, these the, other the, the PWIs. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, and and they're gonna get them, and 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 but it's gonna do so much for Jackson State, and it's gonna do so much for HBCUs. Oh, and Tasha, gonna said, Tasha said Warren Sapp. Warren Sapp, yes, 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 yes. Thanks, Thanks Tasha. Thank you, thank you, Tasha. Thank you, thank you, Warren Sapp. And so it is, it is gonna do so much for us as Black. It ain't, it don't tell you but one. This is what I tell people all the time. Listen, this is what I tell people. It listen. You don't have to change the whole world. It only takes one person to change, and then they're going to change somebody. So Dion made this big move, right? And a big, a big, big my move. husband, he had gotten offers from other PWI schools that he could have chosen, but he chose to go here. And but this is so big, and it is going to be so big for our community. It's going to be so much for our kids, and because they're going to say, now if he went here. Right, first thing I want to go there. I'm glad I. I'm glad. I mean, you know, my mom wouldn't let me go to Jackson State because she said that was that my all my friends was going, and that's, that was fine. They did, but she. But she made the right decision. Me. She made. But the she right probably decision. knew I was gonna meet all these friends in Tuskegee, though. I mean, I'm just saying. But 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 so I have a lot of friends, and I've gone to a lot of their homecomings, and you know, we gonna all be there when we can all be there because we gonna all be there because it's just gonna be like they're gonna be winning, and 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 they're gonna have all these talented kids, and 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 now we're we. We're equaling the playing field is what we're doing. We're equaling the playing field. Or trying to equal the playing field. Making the yes, first yes, yes, step. Yes. But this one step, this one step is going to cause other people to now go to HBCUs. And then it's going to cause the kids to now, you know, want to go to the HBCUs. Because really and truly, they just want to go to the NFL. And they know they, to them, they have a better chance if they go to these other schools, these, these division one schools, right? They have a better chance of getting there. And so that's, that's where they want to go. And then they have these people who's offering them these under table money and all these things, but they're not supposed to be doing. But this is like a good day for HBCUs, a good day for black people. And there's a lot going on in the world. So it was important that we main talk, take a, take a chance, take a moment to just hat tip, 
but, but change, to, right? But but change because Veronica said, you know, like we don't have any major television deals yet, but everything starts somewhere. It, Deion Sanders said he started doing it because the the top ball player in the country decided to go to Howard, mm -hmm. right? And LeBron James' son and some of these other boys, they're like, we're going to HBCU. We have to start somewhere, guys, and this is what it takes. We may not have the major television deals. We may not have what we need, but we know that someday a change is going to come if we, like that, who said that? Maya Angelou. You know, a change going to come if we, look at your face, look at your face. A change going to come, you know, listen, it's like a preacher. It will come if we just take the first step. And, mm -hmm. and, and I'll end with this, you know, congratulations to Dion for, you know, uh, making a change going to an HBCU, maybe not having everything now, but Dr. Martin Luther King and going back to what you said with John Lewis, they had to go on that bridge. They had to sit in in those restaurants as I watched uh, the John Lewis uh, Good Trouble documentary last night. If it wasn't for John Lewis going and his team and his people going in, sitting in those restaurants, being kicked and being beat, and as my husband said, that couldn't have been me. It don't have to be you, but it was them mm -hmm. because they were chosen to do it. And Dion said that it was God that told him to do it. So he he felt in his heart that he wanted to do it. And so these other basketball players, but it's up to all of us to make that change and support. And the way you can make that change coming up in the next couple of weeks is to do what? Vote. Go and vote. And while we're talking to HBCUs and we know that most of us are not having a homecoming, but make sure that you're giving some money back to your school that you love to help. That That's all. That's all. Listen, give some, listen, you said a mouthful with that. Give yeah. the money back yeah. to your schools because our HBC use, they need it and make a commitment. And uh, even if you have to take out an insurance policy, I'm throwing everything in. You know, we as black people, we, we could take out an insurance policy, even if it's a $10,000 insurance policy, $20,000 insurance policy and make our schools the beneficiary. The whole goal is a change is gonna come. It gotta come. And it looked like it's coming with the changes that happen. So thank y'all for tuning in to main talk conversations about hair. Every week we're here at the same that time, same that channel, talking about some good stuff. We have more things coming down the pipeline, but uh, we over our time by two minutes, but you know, we got to get it in and uh, make sure y'all tune in. Follow us on social media. T go over to our Facebook page on Main Talk on Air and Main Talk on Air on Instagram. Share the post with your friends, your family, and everybody and tell them that just when y'all thought hair wasn't important, Main Talk Main team Main made Talk. it dust. Yeah, and thank you for watching. And thank you for watching. Let's talk about hair. It's not your average conversation. It's your average conversation. About hair. Okay. Thanks, Veronica. She said, awesome it's show. Thanks, Tanya. Go out and vote. Go out and vote. Hey, Derek. Bye, Derek. <laughs> bye, Lord. Bye, Derek. Lord have um, mercy. And bye, bye Sarsh, uh, Cheryl. She said, thank y'all for pushing the message, message of voting. Share the post, y'all. Share them on your page. Yeah. We're trying to bring up our viewership. We'll see y'all on next week. Let's talk bye. about it. Bye. Bye-bye, y'all. <laughs>